um, the, really the turning point for me um, in my experience in Iraq was an incident that occurred when I was off duty um, at night. Uh, there, was a, there was a platoon in my company who were, how shall I put this, they were the, 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 the hardcore platoon. You know, every unit has one platoon that is more extreme than the rest. This platoon happened to have a squad that was on, uh, well, they, they called it an ambush, but really what it was is they, they were hiding out in the, in, uh, the farms in the surrounding uh, area outside the perimeter, and they were trying to detain and stop people who were out past curfew. Um, so they were out there one, one night, um, and apparently a, a farmer uh, was on his property. I think it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and you know, electricity was um, intermittent, and he was out there trying, I think, trying to, to work on his farm, uh, work on a pump or something. They told him to halt and stop. He panicked and ran. Uh, they opened fire, and they, they killed this individual. Um, the next day, Civil Affairs came and spoke with us and said, as a company, and said, we are not going to pay any benefit to this family. They also informed us that his brother was a, a close ally of us, was work, had, up until this time had been working with us, and was a respected leader of the local community, and that this individual that we killed also had 14 children. The civil affairs officer suggested that we take up a collection and donate a dollar or two apiece to the family and that he thought that that would go a long way in uh, helping to ease the family's suffering. Uh, there's 125 members of a, comp of a rifle company, roughly, so you're talking about anywhere probably between 125 and 150 dollars. Uh, in reality, I don't think anyone donated any money. Um, on September 11th, 2003, I, uh, late, late uh, afternoon, early evening, I was assigned uh, guard tower duty on the perimeter facing a Wahhabist enclave of Balad. We all knew that this was a Wahhabi neighborhood. Osama bin Laden is a Wahhabist. Um, I witnessed a sustained shelling of this neighborhood that lasted well over an hour. I don't know if the neighborhood was evacuated prior to the shelling. I don't know if there were any casualties. All I know is that it was the only civilian area that I witnessed shell the entire time that I was at Balad. Oftentimes, uh, we would be called out on, as a quick reaction force to respond to incidents in the town of Balad. And on these patrols through the town, uh, my squad leader, uh, would oftentimes uh, entertain himself by shooting the local animals, including dogs um, that were tied up in people's front yards. Um, there was one occasion when he started shooting dogs, but the lieutenant came over the radio and said, Why, what, what's going on? Why are you firing? What's happening? And he you know, indicated that he was just shooting dogs, and my lieutenant replied back, well, that's okay, but just from now on, let me know that you're going to do that before you do it. And finally, uh, this is probably the hardest incident for me to talk about, so excuse me. Uh, one morning, a few months prior to me leaving, uh, I was on a, a post which was a, a last... Um, security post behind the front gate. In other words, I was manning a machine gun that was uh, there to ensure that if anyone managed to get past the front gate that they wouldn't actually get inside the post. It was very early in the morning and, and I was haggard and, and actually not in a very good mood. And uh, I saw a Humvee come through the gate and it was pulling a um, it was towing a blue mini pickup truck. Those are very common in Iraq. And I couldn't, from a distance, I couldn't really tell what was going on. 
And as they approached closer, um, it appeared that the pickup truck was riddled with bullets and, and shrapnel. Uh, I think one of the tires was flat. And as they pulled past me, there was, uh, there was um, apparently what had happened, there was an, an attack on a convoy earlier that morning um, using this pickup truck. And as they pulled past me, I realized that the pickup truck was full of um, dead insurgents that had been killed in this attack. Uh, they had obviously been engaged with large caliber weapons, probably Mark 19s, 50 caliber. Um, there were several corpses that were decapitated. Um, they had large holes through their bodies. There was, I'll never forget this, there was a very young um, PFC, I believe. He was standing in the back of the pickup truck. And as they rolled by, he lifted one of the decapitated heads up in front of me. And he, he basically said, you know, we really, in, in much rougher language than this, we really screwed these guys up, didn't we? And there was another uh, enlisted member in the back of the truck with him. And they were, they were celebrating. Uh, on top of these bodies that were piled up in the back. Uh, you know, and these insurgents didn't appear to me to look like, you know, the hardened terrorist that everyone, you know, says that they, that they are. Uh, these were mostly teenage boys and young men, looked like they were from the local community. Um, and finally, just to wrap things up, I, I want to take this time to apologize to the Iraqi people for um, the things that, that you know, I helped um, to do and the, the actions that, that people in my unit and myself uh, did while I was there. Thank you.